Let's do it. Today we're TIG welding on some carbon steel, a 5F TIG welding test, doing some walk in the cup and some freehand. I will list all the settings and all the details toward the end of the video. This is a two pass weld. For this first pass, I'm propping with a TIG finger for this half. And that lets me prop right close to the weld where it's going to get really toasty. Without the TIG finger, I've got to find another place to prop and hold the torch back a good bit farther. Doesn't work as well for me. Now I'm bearing down with that electrode right in the middle of that root. I'm not doing a whole lot of motion. Just a very slight side to side motion maybe. You don't even have to do that. Keeping a tight arc keeping that sharpened electrode pointed right to the root of that joint and using a 332 filler wire all help you get complete penetration into the root. A 5F test like this is sometimes used to qualify strictly for fillet welds but one of the requirements for passing the test is complete penetration into the root of the joint and they verify that by doing a macro etch test. If you've been watching many of my videos you know that I've done many many macro etch test. But what they're checking for is just to verify that there is no lack of fusion in the root of the joint. And that's why I've got the machine set good and hot and why I'm using a nice tight arc and a 332 wire. This seems to be going in okay. Now we're getting ready for the second half and we'll walk the cup on that. Everything else will remain the same. All right, it's time to walk the cup now. I'm holding the torch like this just because it's comfortable for me. If I wanted to make sure to make it all the way to the top without stopping, I'd probably hold the torch different where I was a little bit uncomfortable to start with, but then it became comfortable toward the top. Again, just doing some slight wiggling to try to focus that arc on the root of the joint. And keeping just a little bit of pressure on the filler wire so that it stays in the puddle. You don't want it melting and coming loose. For TIG welding carbon steel, you really need to remove mill scale. And even if it's cold rolled that you're welding, it's going to go better if you shine it up. Get good, clean, bright metal. It makes TIG welding go a lot better, makes it flow better at lower heat. Also, if you duff your electrode at all, sputter it, and it's got a dull point on it, Stop, resharpen, put another electrode tip in there. It's worth it. And it looks like I'm going to be able to make it without stopping all the way to the top. Not that having a restart would be a big deal here. I just like to make it all the way if I can. So I'm pretty much there and it's time to put on that second pass, but we will let it cool for just a few minutes first. I switched over to a Jazzy 10 ceramic cup here and bumped my argon up just a little bit so that I can use a nice long stick out so the cup doesn't block the arc shots. I'm using probably close to a 3 quarter inch electrode extension here and that is not a problem with this cup. You don't always need that but it really helps me when I'm filming like this because well I'm trying to get a good arc shot. I am going to make a stop and restart right about here though because my knees are telling me that that's what I should do. Along with switching over to the number 10 cup and increasing the argon flow a little bit, I also went up to a 1 8 filler wire. I'm trying to keep an eye on the toes of the weld to make sure I don't go too wide and to make sure I don't shake around and get undercut or underfill or anything like that. Also, having this thing perfectly clean with no mill scale at all really helps to prevent any undercut that might happen on those toes. You don't get near as much undercut with TIG as you do with stick or other processes, but you can get it if you're careless. If you go to sweeping that arc out there and don't pause long enough to let the filler metal fill it in, you can definitely get a little nip of undercut here and there, and we don't want that. If you watch real close, you can see that I'm, I'm pausing momentarily on those toes. I mean just not even half a second probably but I'm not just bouncing from side to side. I'm giving that metal just enough time to flow and to make a nice little fusion line on the toe. Well it's time to walk the cup for that last half. 
on the first pass, I was able to make it all the way from bottom to top without stopping on the walk in the cup side, which is this side. So I'm going to try the same thing here. I'm going to grip the torch the same way and see if it works out again. Midway, I'll have to stand up. But that is one good thing about walking the cup. You can kind of just kind of keep pressure on that thing and, and hold steady while you move your body around. In this case, again, I'm going to kneel up here about halfway through. This is ER70S6 filler wire, and there is a difference between S6 and S2. Most people would tell you they prefer S6. Certain instances, S2 might work better. I love S6 for open root. It seems to be flowing really well right here. I'm noticing while I'm editing this video that this side looks a little hotter, and that's probably just because the piece is heated up quite a bit. I didn't let it cool between doing the other side and this side. It's not out of control by any, by any stretch. I just noticed it seems a little hotter. Laying in there pretty good. That number 10 cup has is, is let me lean back quite a bit. It's shielding really well and it's big enough to not rub on the weld while I'm walking the cup and finishing this thing up. Well, let's test this thing. I'll cut into it halfway through both the freehand and walking the cup sides, put a little polish on it, along with some 5% nidal etch, and that will reveal lack of fusion or complete fusion into the root of the joint. I don't see any lack of fusion. Let's do the walking the cup side. I'm not expecting anything different here because I use the same exact settings. Very similar results there. I said I would list all the settings toward the end, so all the settings and details coming up in just about two seconds. 3 16 plate, 3 16 wall, 2 inch pipe, 150 amps all the way. ER70S6 filler metal, 332 on the root, 1 8 on the second pass, number 7 cup on the first pass, number 10 cup on the second pass. Hey, if you'll hang in for another two minutes, I think you'll find this little commercial interesting and informative. Our customers at Weldmonger.com have been asking us for this kit. A good mix of all the most popular Furic cups and also a standard number 5 for TIG welding aluminum. There's a reason why so many really good TIG welders prefer a number 5 cup for TIG welding aluminum. It limits the amount of cleaning action that wanders outside the puddle and it just focuses the arc a little bit better. But for steels and stainless steels and chromoly, you're going to want to use a gas lens. This one will let you use all the popular ferret cups from the 8 all the way up to the BBW. Clear and ceramic. The number 8 Pro Clear works great on steel and stainless steel. Gives great shielding and really good visibility. It really lights things up, lets you look through the cup when you need to. But mainly, if you're having trouble seeing that puddle, it really does light the way just like a light bulb. To switch over to a ceramic cup, just pull the cup off, remove the o-ring, and thread a cup on. Switching back and forth from ceramic cups to clear cups is pretty dang easy. The Jazzy 10 Ceramic is one of my favorite cups for stainless and chromoly. It's durable, but it also gives great gas coverage, and you can use a really long stick out when you need to with only the same gas that a number 8 takes. 20 CFH will do the job. There are times when you need a little bit bigger cup with a little bit longer stick out, and you still want to have really good shielding. A number 12 will do you at about 25 CFH. This is plain carbon steel, but it's still doing a great job shielding. Two different insulators are included to make sure it'll fit your torch, along with three back caps, along with three pieces of 332 tungsten. That was the 17 kit. This is the 920 kit. This little collet body also works with O-rings for clear cups. If you got any doubts on what style torch you have, this little graphic should help you. A quick glance at your collet body should tell you which torch you have.